Okay, my subject is uh, a growing pot. A pot. Uh, when I hear a pot, it makes me think of cabin. Pot, pot. <laughs> but anyway, it is an area where we grow the seeds, nut, nut seeds, in our tea pit. And we, we used the help of the forestry department to furnish a bulldozer and a driver. A problem, that, one of the first problems we had in the clearing was the large trees that our park officials wanted to save. And so what we ended up with was a two acre plot cleared off, closed off completely, and about, about six tall pine trees and, and oak trees at the upper edge. And we had a, a row of <coughs> seeds on the high side and about five rows on the low side. So the two rows that were closest to the large trees were shaded a good part of the day. And in every case, as I recall, in shaking them, uh, the, the seeds either died or withered away, never came out of the tube. Or if they came out, they didn't last long. And which we believe it probably was, was the lack of sunlight. So we feel very strong to do that. As much sun as you can get, full sun if possible. And I know when there's so many trees in our woods, it's hard to get 100% full sun. But the idea is to get as much as you can, or if you're going to be growing these in a pot. There were, there were some experiments made by, by interpreter Steve. Boss, a couple of years before, about 2014, they put some seeds in, in the woods that was practically full, full shade, and if they put grow tubes on, but not much came out. In fact, none of them survived. So we went from full shade experiment to basically full sun. So we had no success by just going out and clearing the spot out in the, in the woods without clearing the trees out. So, uh, in 2014, I uh, helped supervise the planting of, I believe it was 53 seeds in about six rows across this plot. South facing sun, Rocky, churdy, slope, well drained, of course. And we, we had a, a success rate the first year, <coughs> Steve, was about, <coughs> excuse me, about the three fourths of those lived maybe the first year. And we were told that a 50% rate would be, <coughs> would be what. Uh, would be considered okay. We, that first year we had uh, we had some, some growth out of the four foot grow tubes. You saw the tubes, the white <coughs> tubes. The, the, they, they must be protected from the critters, and so we had uh, we had good success. We uh, we had to. Uh, we actually used some, some mulch the first year to put around the side. Uh, we, we, don't, we don't recommend that, I don't think, now. Uh, we, put, uh, we actually used some plastic uh, weed guards during those first plantings. And what we, we, we do a lot of that now. That was an experiment. And I think the thinking there was with these black plastic weed guards, so we needed around the plot, around the tree, uh, the heat build up, and maybe you kept the moisture from the loop system. But anyway, uh, bear in mind it was an experiment. You, 
know that we're still experimenting. We don't have the final answers to everything. And probably many of you have farm backgrounds or growing garden backgrounds, and you know that these aren't vegetables that you harvest in one year. The trees take, take many years to fruit. So, we have to be patient.
So bring us uh, to bring us up to date. Hobbs Park is working on a management plan, a partnership that would include the, the whole State Department of Parks, about 52 state parks in Arkansas. Uh, not all would be, not all are, are natural parks or, or we have historical parks and recreation parks, natural parks, but a number of those parks we believe would be able to would have a plot and help us get more viable seeds and resistant seeds. And so our management plan is, is we're working on it now, which will make things work better with, uh, with the environmental students of Rogers High School and uh, keep our plot working. And, the uh, problems of growth and, and animals. We, we just haven't posted the guard yet. We don't have any staff to guard those trees. Those trees. Uh, in the bear country, and there have been some bears in our park. Uh, if they decide to go in there and get them, they'll, they'll get them whatever they want. Steve, you have more bear trouble than we do. So, do you have any, uh, any questions about the plot? Can, can you see in your mind this, this open <coughs> sun filled field with the white tube sticking up on it? And then visualize four years later, we have trees coming out of those tubes 10 feet high. Beginning, just beginning to have birds on them. So next year, we're really looking forward. How long do you leave the tubes on the trees? Well, you leave them on, I think I heard around five feet of growth out of the tube. Did you say that? Um, they, those are biodegradable and, and they'll actually break down after about six or seven years. And the tree will grow big enough to be able to move it. But then we found out another problem though. Um, uh, the, um, Deer, for some reason, like to drag their antlers on them, and so you know, they put it back on there. It's a tough job. Somebody's you know, got to try to do that down protection of those trees. So. You have to cut them off. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, they just seem to be split down through there. Yeah, as long as it's covered <coughs> part of the trunk, they won't run, run their antlers on it, though. So we've removed them from trees and had to put them back on. Again, I know that's a real good question, though. So. Uh, Steve, I want to. Speaking to what you said there, that we've got a lot of deer uh, trouble in my plots. And I think that you can get a four by two inch uh, web wire. It's not real heavy. You can get a four or five foot or six. Anyway, I use four and five foot. Cut a four foot strip of that and wrap it right around there and take your fingers. Cut it where the two inch sticks out because you have to have together. Put a rebar down 